time with Timmy the Tool Man and Sean. Today, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our ARB bumper install on a third generation Toyota 4Runner to another level. And that level is, is we are gonna show you how to install a winch on it. There's lots of choices out there for winches. We happen to choose a come up winch, which Toy Tech sells. So originally, what we bought for his bumper was a come up winch that had a built in control box. And that ended up being a big mistake because the version with the built in control box was too big to fit in the bumper. So we had to go to the other option of choosing one that has an external control box that we plan on relocating into the engine compartment. You have choices of where you put that box. Some people put it right on the front of the bumper, in front of the grill. We're choosing a more cleaner look and found a good spot on the passenger side of the engine compartment to put that control box. The one thing that you have to do if you choose to relocate that control box is you have to make all the wires longer to route from the engine compartment to the front of the vehicle. In this video, we're gonna show you how to get the winch bolted to the bumper, get it onto the vehicle, but the real meat and potatoes of this install is showing how you can relocate that control box in the engine compartment and then extend all the wires to make it work. As you can see from this picture on the box, the normal mounting spot for the control box is right on the motor itself but there's no way you're gonna have that kind of room on an ARB bumper. You're gonna have to relocate it either in front, right in front of the grill, or somewhere else in the engine compartment like we're gonna be doing. With all that said, let's get started on this job. We're gonna take the ARB bumper off his rig. It's held on by six 17 millimeter bolts, three on each side. I'm gonna go ahead and utilize my big Milwaukee cordless ratchet to do that. The other side is exactly the same. You just gotta get the three bolts out that attach the bumper to the brackets on the frame rails. In addition to getting the six bolts out that hold the bumper onto the frame brackets, you want to disconnect the electrical connectors to your turn signals so you don't rip out any wires. So now we're gonna pull the bumper off the vehicle. We're gonna set it on a table to where we could comfortably get the winch attached. I gotta move off. Pull, pull, pull. You have to look at your ARB bumper and the winch you have and figure out is it going to fit as is to where you can get access to the clutch and then easily get access to the connections that you have to make at the motor. You can clock the motor, you can disassemble the bolts and turn it 90 degrees basically get it in the position that's going to be best to make the connections and same for the clutch so we figured out that we're going to want to have the clutch handle towards the front this winch is going to bolt up to the inside of the bumper just like this so we figured that there's enough room to where you can pull this unlock it and unspool the line and depending on your winch you're gonna to have to figure out what orientation is gonna be best for this clutch handle. Depending on your model winch, the steps to clocking it are gonna be different. We first had to remove this cover. It bolts on with four long bolts. And then once we got the cover off, there was a gasket that was covering the other bolts we had to get to. So we took the gasket off and that exposed a series of more Allen head bolts that we had to remove. Once we got all six of these long bolts out, we pulled the clutch body free of the winch and then we turned it 90 degrees because originally this handle was up here. And then we had to go through the process of realigning all the gears. And what helped was getting a screwdriver in here to like just barely turn each gear a little bit. And then you finally find the sweet spot and you're able to get all the gears matched and you could slide it back together and then you just get your allen bolts reconnected our plan was to first attach the fairly to the bumper but then we realized 
this ARB bumper is kind of unique. So with most bumpers, they have a plate right here and the winch sits on there with four bolts and then the line pays out this way and you put your fairly right here. But with this ARB setup is the winch is gonna share the same holes with the fairlead. We're not gonna have to utilize as many fasteners, but what we had to do is get some longer bolts that would go through the fairlead and also be able to go through the winch. So the included bolts aren't gonna really work for us. We had to come up with some longer M10 bolts. The way the winch attaches to the bumper is you come in with the bolt capturing the bumper and then it goes through here and then it screws into a square nut. So what you have to do is you have to slide these in first and then carefully get the orientation and that's how they go together. We wanted to show you that right now because once we get this set on the bumper, you're not gonna be able to see this. We're thinking that if we put a little bit of grease on the face of the nut here, it's gonna not slide around so much when we're trying to align the bolt with the nut. Just a little bit of extra resistance. We're gonna do that with all four of them. Right now, what I'm looking at is the release for the clutch, and that's coming pretty close to this inner plate. So we might have to readjust this. We'll have to see here. We're gonna have to get a couple bolts in here and just see how it's gonna bolt up to make sure this is gonna work. With this kit, the bolt size is a 17 millimeter. Your kit might be different. Utilizing a deep 17 millimeter socket and a 3 8 ratchet, I tighten the two bottom ones, which are easy to get to. The top ones are a little bit more involved and I've seen the same thing on other manufacturer bumpers. They allow you a little access hole through the front to have an easier time getting the bolt started. So we'll show you that. These two holes right here make it easier for you to get the bolt started and then the bolt tightened up. We're gonna come in with the same 17 millimeter with a little extension and tighten them up from here. No torque value for these, just use your best judgment or use that German spec that we all know and love, Gutentai. And that's good and tight. The next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna feed the synthetic line through the fair lead and get this sling hook attached. There it is, little thimble here. So you first take this and you capture your thimble. You have a rod and you have this little sleeve. And this sleeve has two distinct sides. It has a stepped side and then a non-stepped side. Looking at our little directions here, we figured out that you drive the pin through the step side. This fits together like this. And the sleeve, it goes right in here like this. And then they say to hammer it together, but uh, I guess we'll get a couple blocks of wood here to have something to hammer against and then we'll hammer these together. Eye protection might not be a bad thing, but we're gonna live dangerously. We're just gonna tap this easy because we have to make sure that the pin also lines up with these bottom two pieces. Seems like it's not lined up there. There we go. There it is, that was easy. We've got the pin flush with both sides, so we're good to go. Now that we have the winch attached to the bumper, we're gonna work on the wiring part of this job. With this ARB bumper, most people don't try to make it work to where the control box is attached to the winch. They relocate the control box somewhere else. And that's what Sean has chosen for his rig. We're gonna relocate the control box in the engine compartment on the passenger side. What we're gonna do now is just make sure the bumper is going to fit properly with the winch attached the way we have it currently. And then if it is all good to go, then we're going to start figuring out the length of the wires we're going to have to create to allow the control box to be in the engine compartment. Okay, now 
we just need to lift it up evenly over these next little groove things. Okay. Tight it forward. Yep. See how it's touching the, the brace right here now? We gotta remove the brace. It's not even close to lining it up though. It's up against that brace right now. Yeah, I see that. How much more room do we have though if the brace gets removed? <laughs> not much. Not much, huh? Looking down at the cross member right in front of the AC condenser, you will notice that the come up winch basically comes right in contact with it. There is no space to spare. We had to get the winch right up against that cross member in order to get the bolts installed. We had to remove this center cross member piece because the winch was coming in contact with it. This goes right in the center, right underneath this lock assembly. The center connection for the front grill clips in right here. Your AC line plugs in right here. We found that with this still installed on the vehicle, there was no way we were gonna get the bumper in because this was getting in the way. So we got the bumper on, everything seemed to fit okay. And taking a look at where we mounted the control box, we used some brackets that came with the trans cooler. You can see them there, they're silver. We're pointing to them with the pointer tool. And we just bent them up so that it sat pretty much flat and it fit in that space without hitting the hood as well. And you can see here, the wires just really aren't long enough to reach the winch. We noticed that the power cable is long enough, but we will need to extend some things. And so that's what we're gonna show you. Typically, people would mount it to the front of the bumper here you can see some holes are already there. So we're gonna remove this box next and we're gonna show you how to extend the wires using some welding cable. So this is the control box that comes with the come up winch. This power cable, the red cable we found is gonna be long enough. We don't have to extend that one. This ground wire also is long enough. We'll be able to find a good spot in the engine compartment to ground this. These three lines are too short and these will have to be replaced with longer ones. Another thing that's going to need some alteration is this plug. We're going to have to snip it, butt connect or solder some other wires and extend it to where this can reach all the way to the winch. Depending on the winch you have, how you disassemble it to where you can make the disconnect for the wires inside is going to be specific to that winch. This come up winch side plate has a couple three millimeter bolts that I'm going to remove to open up access. I'm just using a little quarter inch ratchet with the three millimeter socket. The next thing we want to do is we want to remove these eight millimeter bolts and the way they affix is a eight millimeter nut slides into these slots. So now we should be able to pull this out and then I'll turn it the other way here. So now you can see we have easy access to disconnecting the connectors and getting new ones connected. These nuts are a 13 millimeter. I'm just going to use my quarter inch ratchet to loosen them. Kind of interesting. They actually even color code the studs in the nuts. We disconnected the three cables that we have to make longer. Now we're gonna show you how to make longer ones with a special crimping tool that we bought. It's a hydraulic tool. The type of cable that we're gonna to use to extend the lines is a welding cable. It's a number two Temco Easy Flex. The reason why we're using welding cable is it's usually very high quality and the size of the wire is really true. So we know that this number two size is going to be very accurate. We went ahead and figured out what length we had to make all the cables and now we're going to show you how to cut it. 
we're just going to use uh, two foot long bolt cutters to snip the wire. Just like that. Get down on it. Sham down, deba deba do. Get your back on top of the wall. Dan, come on. This is the kit that we're going to use to make the terminal end connections. This kit is a hydraulic tool. You choose the size die that you want depending on the size of the wire and then you put the wire into the tool and then it's a matter of just ratcheting down and crimping it. This thing has a lot of strength. It might be a little trial and error. The first set of dies might not get the crimp that you hope for and then you just have to drop down the size one more or two more to finally get it right. So it might be a little trial and error for you when you're making these longer lines. And of course, we will put a link in the video description to this kit so you can get the same one if you'd like to. We have this terminal end kit that has a bunch of different sizes and what we're gonna do is we're gonna cut back the rubber sheathing to expose the copper strands and then we're gonna pick one that fits over the copper strands nice and snug. You don't want a whole lot of play. So we're gonna have to cut back the sheathing enough to where we can slide it into one of these connectors. Okay, I took a little measurement with my finger. I'm gonna mark it with a utility blade. I'm just gonna cut around the circumference so I can pull off this rubber sheathing. Let's see if I got it enough. There we go. Again, we wanna pick one that's gonna fit it tight. Let's see how nicely this one fits. That's a pretty snug fit. I think this is gonna be the right size. The strands are a little bit too long though. I might've cut too much of the sheathing back, so, but that might be good. Yeah, that's gonna be good. I could just push it a little more. So now we're gonna get our hydraulic tool on here and crimp it down. The goal of the crimping tool is basically it's gonna make those individual copper strands into one big block. It basically makes it into a solid wire because the pressure is so intense it just melds all the strands together. So that's what we're after. In order to have a nice sealed and finished look, we're gonna use a little shrink tubing. So you wanna put your shrink tubing over first and then slide the connector over your copper strands. Now we gotta get the terminal end between the jaws of the tool and we're gonna crimp this thing. When you get the terminal end in the tool, you don't want to be clamping on the flared part. You want to be clamping onto the flat section. So don't capture the flared end in the jaws, just this flat section. Okay, go ahead. Okay, that's nice and tight. You release pressure. And then notice how you end up with a couple little flared ends. That's because of the hexagonal shape of the tool dies. So we're gonna put it back in there and just smash these two down. We're gonna capture these little fins. So here's the finished result. It's nice and crimped very solidly. The flared end is sticking up a little bit and we want a more flat look to it. So I just have the terminal end on the anvil of my bench vise. I'm using a ball peen hammer. I'm gonna go around the whole circumference just tapping it in a little bit. This is purely optional. All right, we flattened out the flared end a little bit with the ball peen hammer. Now we're gonna slide our shrink tubing over. We're gonna use a heat gun to shrink the tubing. All right, that looks good. One nice thing that all these winch kits do for you is they color code the cables. This is an example. This one is labeled blue and you hook it up to a blue connector on the control box and a blue connector on the winch motor. We're gonna duplicate that coloring scheme by just using some color tape. So I have color tape for all the colors of this kit. 
You need blue, you need yellow, white, and red. The last thing that we wanna do is swap over this little rubber boot that's like a weather shield over the connector. We took it off one of the pre-built ones that come with the kit and we're gonna slide it on to the one we just made. We rolled it back just like a rubber, if you know how to use a rubber. And there we go. And then you make your connection. Once you got it connected, then you just fit the boot over there. You jimmy it up and then it's all protected. <laughs> no STDs for this cable. We have our three cables built. Now we have to extend this connector. So we're just gonna snip it off. We're gonna have to cut this black sheathing back a little bit to where we can strip the wires and figure out what the proper size wire we need to extend it. I'm gonna take this little pair of wire cutters and just slice this. Okay, we noticed after the fact that the wires are both the same color, so it's not easy to tell the two apart. Luckily, my cut wasn't exactly perfect, so we were able to figure out which one goes to which wire. Just make note of that before you go snipping wires. Make sure that it's easy to tell the difference between the wires. The way you can figure out the size of the strand is you could put it in your wire strippers and then just start off a little bit bigger than you think and then step it down one size at a time. And when it finally strips off the sheathing and exposes the copper wire, you know you have the right size. And then you could take a look at your tool and figure out what size wire that was. I put it in the 10 slot, no way. I'm gonna put it in the 12 slot, doesn't do it. Now I'm gonna go down to 14. It's probably gonna be a 14. There it is. So now we know the size wire we need to use to make an extension and basically extend this to where we can now connect up the motor to the control box with this connector. To make the connections, we're choosing to use shrink buck connectors. You could solder, you can do some other type of connection. I like these because they have uh, glue in them. So when you shrink it around the sheathing, it makes a pretty good seal. If you're worried about the width, then solder. You tighten the strands really tight. You slide your butt connector over, hold it. You use your type of crimping tool. This is a ratcheting type. It's color coded, so you can't mess it up. And there it is. There's one side, and now we have to connect up the corresponding side. I had some 14 gauge wire with a white sheathing in stock at the Timmy the Toolman Studios. So we're gonna use this wire for both of them. What I found to make this job easier of crimping, I hold the wire and the butt connector in my left hand. I pull back on the connector towards the wire, holding it in there to make sure it's in there properly. Then I use the ratchet with my right hand. And there it is. And now we just gotta shrink it. Okay, that's one, and we're gonna do the other the same way. Now that we have all the cables made, we're gonna make the connections back to the control box. All right, they're all reconnected, and we're just gonna cinch them up with our little quarter-inch ratchet. Okay, they're all cinched up. Now we gotta get this box put back together. So what we learned in taking this apart initially is that for this part to get the bottom plate connected up to the main body, you come in with your bolt, you put the nut on just loosely, and then you leave enough plate to where you can slide the nuts back into these slots. And then once all four are in place, then you can cinch them up. In order to slide the nuts into the slot, like we said, we're gonna take this other cover off too, to where we can lift the whole assembly up and then slide it in place.
So now that we have this side loose, we can slide the whole assembly down and then line up the nuts with the channels. Okay, we got the front two in and now we're gonna slide it in and get the back two in. Okay, we got it slid in and then now we can get the plate back on. We're gonna get the opposing plate on too. And now we're gonna cinch down the bottom plate bolts and nuts. Okay, we've got the control box all put back together with our new extended lines. Now we're gonna go back to the truck and install the control box in the engine compartment. So again, this is the location that Sean chose to mount his control box. What he used to mount it to the engine compartment was a couple leftover brackets that come with a transmission cooler kit that you can get from True Cool or B&M. They're nice lightweight clamps that you could easily bend in your hand or maybe on a bench vise. So all the holes that Sean used to mount these brackets were existing holes in the body. So he bent this one kind of in a S shape and he used one of the bolt holes right underneath the cruise control box. The other existing hole that Sean used to mount the second bracket is right behind this ABS module right here. So this is just one of many ways you can get it done. What we're doing right now is we're gonna get the cables through the route that we've chosen. Basically, underneath the cruise control on the inside of the air box, and then it's gonna go through a hole that the headlight uses, and then it's gonna go right to the motor on the winch. So we're going to go over the wiring routing that we used for the control box on the passenger side of the engine compartment. Most of the cables went from here underneath the cruise control module, underneath the air box tube, and then routed right through the hole that the headlight uses. And then it went down and we made the connections to the motor of the winch. The power cable went from the box and we decided to route it this way clockwise and we routed it along the firewall and then right in front of the evap canister and then right to the positive cable on the battery there's a ground wire also and that just connects up to the motor housing of the winch and then we decided to route it this direction we went down along the bumper we came up through a hole right behind the reservoir we routed the cable around this side of the battery and then we connected it to the negative terminal for the battery. Now, fingers crossed, it's gonna work like we hope. The cool thing about this come up winch is it has a wireless capability with a little remote. If you're using the cable route, you would just plug this sucker in. You can see it's got a little notch, it's keyed. For safety's sake, when you're winching, you wanna keep the hood up to where if the cable breaks, it's gonna slam the hood. It's not gonna go through the windshield and chop your head off. So you would do something of this nature and you'd be sitting inside your rig and you'd be winching and hopefully getting out of the sticky situation that you got yourself into. Or maybe you're winching a buddy out. Maybe you're a nice guy. But since this has this little remote one, you don't need to use this. You could use the remote. So you got two choices with this one. So let's show you how this thing works. If you don't want to drain your battery and get stuck, you want the motor running when you're running a winch because it draws a lot of power. So always have the motor running when you're winching or winching. I don't know what, which one it is, winching. So these controllers dumb it down for you. They say out and in. So I'm just going to show you how to get it out a little bit. And then this is always good 
you want to keep tension on the line when you're going back in so it doesn't get loose and sloppy. So we'll go in a little bit. You gotta be really careful not to catch your hand. So once you get it close enough, this is pretty common. You hook it to one of your toe hooks and then you cinch it up. Just like that. Now we'll use the remote. So it's got arrows. This is out and that's in, I think. Let's make sure. You gotta turn the sucker on first. So you gotta hold the on button There it goes, it turned green. I'm gonna get a little slack. So I had a reverse. This is coming out, this is going in. And then we'll go back in. There it is there. We successfully installed the come up winch on an ARB bumper on a third generation Toyota 4Runner. You could do it on a first generation Toyota Tacoma because basically these ARB bumpers were originally meant for first generation Tacomas, but through some ingenuity, you can make it work for third generation 4Runners. All right, we're all done with this job. We successfully showed you how to install a winch on your ARB bumper. The one we did specifically was a come up winch that we got through Toy Tech. It's fairly straightforward, but what you have to know is that there's not a whole lot of room to get that winch in there and get the bumper back on. As we showed you, that little center support that goes right in front of the AC condenser that the hood lock assembly attaches to, there was no way we were going to be able to get the bumper on because the winch needed that room that that bracket was occupying. So we had to remove that center bracket in order to get the bumper on. Depending on the manufacturer winch you buy and the model you buy, you might not run into that problem. You might not have to remove that center support. But if you buy a come up winch, know that you're gonna have to remove that center support. You're not gonna be able to make it work without doing that. Another thing that we found on this come up winch is that the electrical post connections to the motor are pretty hard to get to. Even if you had the bumper off the vehicle, it would still be a little bit of a pain in the butt to get those suckers connected. So we actually altered a 13 millimeter box end wrench. I put it in my grinder, ground it down to where we can get in there easier to tighten the nuts because there just wasn't a whole lot of room. I think come up gets a little bit of a F plus on the design of the motor housing. They could have made those posts much easier to get connected. I don't know why they made it like that, but for some reason they did. Other than that, it was pretty straightforward. It's gonna be up to you where you install your control box, whether you mount it on the bumper, or you do something like we did by putting the control box in the engine compartment. The purpose of this video is not to show you how to use a winch and all the safety precautions. So we highly recommend that you just look on YouTube. You can find plenty of videos on it. You'll learn some of the safety techniques you should employ to keep you safe and your buddies safe while you're out there wheeling and winching yourself out of a sticky situation. Don't get cut in half by a winch cable. That would ruin your day. With all that said, we thank you for watching Toyota Time with Timmy the Tool Man and Sean. Thank you for watching. Thank you for subscribing. If you have any questions or comments, do that below. Take care. Bye-bye. Sick mods and sick winch installs on ARB bumpers. Peace out and bye-bye.